Erica from My Daughter. Welcome to our show, Sound Bites. We're bringing you all the music news you need from the artists you love. It's Thursday, August 9th, what would have been Whitney Houston's 49th birthday. And today we'll be celebrating her in a very special episode of Extended Cut. It's been six months since we tragically lost Whitney on the eve of the Grammy Awards, but the diva isn't lost from our hearts, especially because her final film, Sparkle, hits theaters next week. The movie is a remake of the 1976 original about a girl group that rises to Motown success in the 1950s. The new version moves the action up a decade to the 1960s and Whitney plays the mother of the group which includes Jordan Sparks. And you remember Jordan as the winner of season 6 of American Idol. With a cast full of such incredible voices, it's no surprise that Sparkle's soundtrack features amazing talent, like CeeLo Green, so Green, who offers his groovy throwback, I'm a man. Let's listen. Sparkle is released nationwide on August 17th and will definitely be there in theaters to revel in Whitney's once-in-a-lifetime voice. That voice has inspired some of the greatest tributes in recent history. Jennifer Hudson gave a stirring performance of I Will Always Love You at the Grammys, and Mariah Carey led a tribute to her friend at this year's BET Awards. I miss my friend. I miss hearing her voice in laughter. But we'll always, we'll always have the music. And audiences continue to celebrate the singer despite the grim circumstances surrounding her death. To talk about Whitney's enduring hold on fans, we go to Idolater's East Coast correspondent, Robbie Daw, via Skype. Hi, Robbie. Hey, Erica. So what will Whitney Houston's legacy be? Well, I think ultimately her legacy is going to be her 30-year catalog of music and probably to a lesser extent uh, the movie The Bodyguard that she starred in. But that basically just comes back to the music anyway. So how did her death impact album sales? Uh, well, her death definitely had an impact on album sales. Her 2000 Greatest Hits collection was the one that naturally everybody flocked to. Um, she died on a Saturday, and by Sunday, 24 hours later, it sold 64,000 uh, 64, copies. And then the next week, it was back in the top 10 on Billboard. And then to go even further, two weeks after that, she had three albums in the top 10, which were the greatest hits I mentioned, uh, the Bodyguard soundtrack, and her self-titled debut album. But isn't a sales bump kind of expected? It is. Uh, it's true. People die, uh, artists die, and their sales rise. But I like to say there are pop stars, and then there are the Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson-sized pop stars. That Greatest Hits album I talked about before uh, stayed in the top 10 for almost two months, and currently it's the fourth best-selling album of 2012 so far. So I think ultimately people regard Whitney as one of the greats, and they it's reflected in the fact that they're buying her music all over again. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you. The day after her death, the 2012 Grammys nabbed its biggest audience since 1984. More than 39 million people tuned in, and her death was named one of, most, one of the most impactful TV moments of the last 50 years. With a superstar career that spanned three decades, it's easy to see why. Remember to tweet us at Idolater, and for more on Whitney, check out Idolater.com. Happy birthday, Whitney Houston. From all of us here at Idolater HQ, where we're going to be spinning your greatest hits all day, including a song so rich, it makes me feel like a million dollar bill. If you feel good, if you're feeling good, good one, and it